An awful lot of last week's conversation was about a new report by Tony Sewell, the Commission on Race and Ethnic Disparities, uh, which uh, basically was reporting to whether or not we do actually have a systemic problem of racism in this country, all sparked, of course, by the Black Lives Matter protests in the wake of uh, George Floyd's uh, murder uh, last year. Um, and the findings basically were that the British Empire, well, it, it, so the British, British com- the country Britain is not institutionally racist. And actually, uh, there is a positive and a negative side to uh, us having been an empire and that uh, things have actually improved an awful lot although there are still a lot of problems to resolve in terms of individuals who are racist and ongoing issues in terms of income uh, and poverty and educational opportunities and job opportunities but not crucially institutionalized racism well over the weekend as, as happened last week in the UK, an awful lot of people put their tuppence worth in saying, basically, if you don't think we've got institutional racism in this country, well, then you don't understand and you're basically racist. Uh, or uh, it's an awful phrase, which is just basically is racist, they can come, the Uncle Tom accusations that were flung at the likes of Tony Sewell and others who were ethnic minority members of that commission. And now the Reverend Jesse Jackson, the American civil rights leader, put his tuppence worth in over the weekend and he said that Britain is the mother country of racism. And must face up to its role in slavery. Let's talk to Dr. Remy Adekoya about this. He's a lecturer in politics at York University and author of a book called Biracial Britain, A Different Way of Looking at Race. Good morning to you, Remy. Morning, Julia. Morning. Um, it's always interesting to have people from other countries putting their tuppence worth in on, on how our country is working. But um, Reverend J- uh, Jesse Jackson, is a, he's a great wordsmith. He's performed a magnificent role in terms of fighting for the most fundamental basic civil rights in the faces of outrageous racism uh, in America that was 100 percent institutionalized. America was born with institutionalized racism, its form of slavery and the battle for civil rights in that country for for people of color. Um, To say that Britain is the mother of racism because we played such a crucial role in America's founding and in our role as an empire around the world. Do you think that's a fair description? You know, that's a soundbite, obviously, Julia. It's a soundbite uh, meant to get attention, and it succeeded in that. You're asking me <laughs> a question about it. So, you know, that was the whole point, which, of course, doesn't change the fact that Britain played a key role in the slave trade and, of course, had colonies all over the world. And I definitely would agree that Britain played a key role in the past in establishing the racial hierarchies that do still persist until, up, up till today. And that's a hierarchy that essentially places white people at the top black people at the bottom and everyone else somewhere in between. Uh, so from this point of view, you know, that is the, there is a lot to be said for that and there are discussions to be had about that. Having said that, I'm not so sure people living in Britain today, ethnic minorities, are really that concerned about who started what 100, 200, 300 years ago. I think what people are really interested in is how racism affects their everyday lives today yeah. and how it might affect their everyday, their children's lives tomorrow. Well, indeed. But it's interesting when you say this. I mean, Britain obviously had a role as a major empire in power, um, as did many other countries in Europe. Um, mm-hmm. Wales was one of the most successful and we still have the Commonwealth today and our links with those nations. And you can see the impact of good and bad on those nations and sometimes particularly bad in terms of the petitioning of some of those nations as well, which 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 has led to a lot of problems. But we do we, we seem to think that issues like slavery um, and and, you know, colonization were invented at some point uh, by the British or by the Europeans, by the white white Europeans, um, as opposed to it having happened Forever since since um, uh, people were able to travel, we had the enslavery of of people and of nations. We saw it in Africa. We saw it in the Middle East. We saw it with you know the Mongols. We saw it with the Roman Empire. Um, the, the, just what, what we're just talking about is the most recent um, uh, 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 empires, and that's being blamed. But but Britain never seems to get any credit for the fact that we were instrumental in ending slavery, particularly African slavery. Now, we've got issues even now with modern day slavery, but but Britain played an instrumental role. And yet that never seems to be mentioned when we have these sort of debates. So I'll I'll respond to that and also tell you what how uh, it might look from a black person's perspective. So on the one hand, you're definitely right. Humankind is capable of all sorts of evil. And definitely evil is not restricted. White people don't have a monopoly on evil, on greed, on prejudice. 
you find that among black people, brown skinned people, and all sorts of people in the world, and this is 100% true. However, from a black perspective, when you say things like what you're saying that, you know, you know, Britain, you know, helped end the slave trade, you know, a black person will say, okay, so you're saying we should be grateful for you having, no. okay, let's, let, let's say not even started something, I agree with you, let's say not even started something, but for you having practiced something, you know, and then ended it. But so no, no, but no, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't Virginia, the black that's, Africans that's, who were yeah. selling African people to white Europeans that ended the slave trade. It was the white Europeans. I mean, I do find it extraordinary, this idea that black people have been uniquely being enslaved. White people were enslaved. Arab people were enslaved. Uh, people of the, the Southeast Asia, of Eastern Asia were enslaved. Uh, virtually every empire has enslaved people and virtually every people has at some point been enslaved. This was not a unique experience. It was horrific what happened in the African uh, um, Atlantic slave trade. Absolutely horrific. And it's the most recent example. But... But why why are we treating this as if this was some one off in history like like the Holocaust of the Jews, which was you know a uniquely horrific event? It, it, this the, these horrific crimes have been committed by almost every civilization. So the reality of the situation, Julia, is the reason why it is still discussed by some black intellectuals, not all black intellectuals. And believe me, you know, if you go to Africa and ask the average Kenyan or Nigerian what their main problems in life are today, they are not going to talk about slavery, which happened a couple of hundred years ago. They're going to talk about their governments over there in Africa, corruption, etc. Yeah. But the reason why this is still discussed amongst black people is because of the reality that the black continent, Africa and the black diaspora in white majority Western societies still remains de facto at the bottom of society. This is the reality. Even in material terms, we see this. So for instance, um, median wealth of the white British household, 314,000 pounds. The report showed that median wealth of the average black African household, 34,000 mm pounds. -hmm. So it's because of this feeling of still being at the bottom but of the hierarchy. But that's not because there. people that's are black. People, that's, that, that's, talk about this. that's not because people are black. There's a difference between the key thing, and I think Reverend Jesse Jackson doesn't really seem to grasp, the key difference between America and Britain is America was built on slavery in lots of ways, and Britain was not. I mean, yes, I know there's a lot of wealth that came about it, but you know that that is not the main reason why Britain uh, was a successful, prosperous nation. It, the 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 differences between black and white people were not enshrined in law until you know only a few decades ago. We didn't have policies which stopped black people from buying homes when we, like, as America, literally had laws effectively banning black people from getting mortgages to buy homes, which had massive impact we didn't we didn't have you know children not allowed to go to the same schools and things like that it, it, it's not institutionalized in our country in the same way isn't it just a huge mistake to liken what the history of america in, in, in going back a couple hundred years or just even a few decades with the history of this country they're so 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 different Likening Britain to America today is, of course, doesn't take us very far. I definitely agree with that. I'd propose two things coming out of that report, which I think could be starting points for our discussion. Mm. Number one, the report says clearly racism does remain a problem in Britain affecting people's everyday yep. lives. Number two, racism does not explain all the ethnic disparities faced by minorities in Britain today. Class matters, family situation matters, gender matters, even geography matters. And all these things matter. And if we can agree on those two points, I think we could take the discussion further from here. Yeah. Rather than, you know, talking about, you know, slavery and what happened 200, 300 years ago. Was it more Britain's fault or more Americans' fault? Or, you know, uh, yeah. that's not really going to get us very far, Judy. Yeah, deal with, deal with the reality. Now, I have to say, the point you just made in terms of racism still exists and all the other issues, um, I, I think most sensible people, regardless of their ethnic background, would agree with, with both of those statements.